To make this DIY tornado, you will need air dry clay, scissors, water, foam core, a paintbrush, and paints. Real tornadoes are rotating columns of air that form when cool, dry air meets moist, warm air head on. The first step in making the DIY tornado is to roll out some air dry clay into a snake. You can use the paintbrush to add water to the clay to help it roll smoother and longer and stronger. The way that we measure a real turn of strength is called the Enhanced Fujita Scale. The next step in making a DIY tornado is to wind up the clay snakes to form the actual tornado. Sometimes damage will happen when winding it up. Use the paintbrush to add water and reattach the clay together. In a real tornado, the wind is what causes the most damage. The strongest tornado is an EF5, or Incredible Tornado. It has wind speeds of 200 plus miles per hour. The weakest tornado is an EF0, or Gale Tornado. It has wind speeds of 65 to 85 miles per hour. The next step in the DIY tornado is to make a base for the tornado to sit on so it can stand up. Using the foam core and air dry clay, create a small but sturdy base for the tornado to sit on. Attach it to the bottom of the tornado when you are done. Real tornadoes are not attached to the ground and can happen anywhere when the conditions are right. 75% of tornadoes happen from March to July, with May having the most dangerous. In the United States, the place most prone to tornadoes is called Tornado or Dixie Alley. Tornado Alley is located in the lower Mississippi Valley between Texas and the Gulf States and Tennessee. Now it's time to let the DIY tornado dry. Once it is dry, it'll be time to paint it. Our DIY tornado turned out super cute and can fit in my hands. Real tornadoes cannot fit in my hand. The diameter for most tornadoes is between one-tenth and one-sixth of a kilometer. Along the ground, some tornadoes move faster than 62 miles per hour. The last step is to paint the DIY tornado. I used black paint for most of the tornado, then added white for the harsh parts of the wind and green for the base to symbolize grass. A real tornado would not be nearly this cute. The last EF5 tornado was on May 20th, 2013 in Moore, Oklahoma. The high that day was in the low to mid 80s with dew points that ranged in the upper 60s. This was because of a cold front that was moving in. A touchdown at 2.56 p.m. in northeastern Grady County caused EF1 damage to a home and some trees before rapidly intensifying to an EF4, causing severe damage to several homes in the subdivision farther to the It's a twister! It's a twister! The Norman Forecast Office declared a tornado emergency for southern Oklahoma City and the city of Moore as many storm spotters spotted a violent tornado heading for the area. The tornado kept moving and eventually hit the Orr family farms and the Celestial Acres horse training area where up to 100 horses were reported killed. The storm continued east and hit an open grassy field before leveling Briarwood Elementary School. The storm eventually became an EF5 with wind speeds up to 200 miles per hour before ending at 3.30 p.m. The high of the day after the Moore tornado was 68 degrees. Unlike the DIY tornado, the storm left the community in distress. Witnesses said the storm looked more like a giant black wall of destruction than a typical twister. For the DIY hurricane, you will need a canvas, watercolor and acrylic paints, water, a paintbrush, a pencil, hot glue, and two colors of yarn. In real life, hurricanes are massive rotating storms that form when warm, moist air rises over tropical waters. The first step in the DIY hurricane is to use the watercolor paints to create a beautiful wash on the canvas. I used water liberally along with a tad bit of black acrylic paint to create darker places representing the storm that accompanies a hurricane. I also used blue watercolor and blue acrylic paints to create a wash on the canvas representing how hurricanes form in the ocean. Hurricanes begin as tropical storms. The scale that we use to measure the strength of a hurricane is called the Saffron slash Simpson Hurricane Scale. The weakest hurricane is a Category 1 with minimum wind speeds of 75 miles per hour. Category 1 hurricanes cause minimal damage and top out at 96 miles per hour. The smallest a hurricane can be is 100 kilometers in diameter. The strongest hurricane is a Category 5 that causes catastrophic damage. 
The strongest wind speed of a hurricane is that of a Category 5, which is over 157 miles per hour. The largest hurricane that we have heard about is 1,100 kilometers in diameter. Hurricanes can move at speeds of 5 to 15 miles per hour on land. Canvas is dry and your DOI hurricane, it's time to add the hot glue and yarn. Draw a pattern with your pencil of how you would like the hurricane to look. Trace the line bit by bit with hot glue and then lay the yarn quickly down onto the glue. While our DIY hurricane is being created on a canvas, a real hurricane occurs most frequently in the U.S. along the Atlantic coast, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Hawaiian Islands. Most hurricanes happen during the fall, but hurricane season is officially from June 1st to November 30th. Fill in any empty spots with yarn to create a nice shape to your DIY hurricane. People who live in different parts of the world have different names for hurricanes. A rotating storm is called a hurricane when it forms north of the equator and in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific Ocean. It is called a typhoon when it forms north of the equator and in the Western Pacific Ocean. It is called a cyclone when it forms in the Indian Ocean and off the coast of Australia. Now you have a nice DIY hurricane to display in your room and remind you of hurricanes from the past like Hurricane Florence, which formed in the Atlantic Ocean and made landfall in North Carolina. Catastrophic damage was caused by Florence, which was a Category 4 hurricane with wind speeds up to 140 miles per hour. It lasted from August 31st through September 19th, 2018, and cost the community nearly $18 million in damage. For this DIY thunderstorm, you will need a canvas, water, a paintbrush, a cloth, and acrylic paints in the following colors, black, white, blue, and yellow. Real thunderstorms are not made from paints. A thunderstorm is a disturbance in the atmosphere that is characterized by lightning and thunder. By DIY, I chose to show lightning and rain and clouds. You can choose which part of a thunderstorm you would like to show. Thunderstorms can produce gusty winds, heavy rain, sleet, snow, hail, or no precipitation at all. A severe thunderstorm can produce flash floods and tornadoes. First, you'll want to mix your blue and black paints to create a midnight blue color for the background. The thunderstorm I am depicting is happening at night, but thunderstorms occur in the spring and summer months during the warmest part of the day, so you can choose if you want yours to be during the day or night. Thunderstorms occur in the U.S. most often along the Gulf Coast and in Florida. Once you have finished painting the background, let it dry. My thunderstorm is a scale model depicting how I imagine thunderstorms. However, real thunderstorms are much bigger. The average thunderstorm has a 24 kilometer diameter. My DIY thunderstorm has rain, lightning, and clouds. At any moment, 1,500 to 2,000 thunderstorms are occurring on Earth. If the temperature in a thundercloud is below freezing and winds are strong, the raindrops can perform into hail. Thunderstorms are the simplest of all three storms.